Okay, so sometimes we get requests for people who want to work in teams, work collaboratively to merge files, uh, to work in remote locations or for multiple coders to code concurrently on the one project. So it does come up. Um, there's not a great deal already in the, it is in the help files, but it's not explicit or it's easy to find. So we're putting up this video just to explain the process. So there is, uh, the first thing to say is that there is a, uh, a product, a version of Envivo known as Envivo for Teams formerly known as Envivo Server. And it means that people who are working on the same network can collaborate on a single file. And whereas multiple users can work concurrently on the same file. Now it does require a particular setup on your institutional server, and it does require um, an additional license, but it works very well for those that have those, that meet those conditions. But the, the difficulty for others is that they're working across different institutions for example, um, or working from home or outside of the network. So um, they they have to work currently on the standalone version and merge the files. And that's probably the most common way that people work collaboratively, to be honest. So, so merging the files, there's a very good blog on the QSR website, which I recommend you read first before you really go on any more of this video, um, because this is it here. Um, and I'll put the link up in the notes on YouTube afterwards so you can access it and it does explain a lot about what i'm going to talk about here and best practices and protocols for working in teams it's by kathy McInniff. so I, i'm i'll give you the link to that but just the process for physically merging the files sometimes comes up so that's what we're going to focus on here not so much the protocol so let's say i have a master copy on my server i've got two coders who have now gone off and coded separately and we now want to bring these back together again so that we can do inter-rate reliability testing or that go to the next round of coding and and those each coder can see the other's work, their annotations, their memos, their coding. So that means physically merging the files. Now, I just made, you can see I have two copies here of the standard tutorial that comes with the in vivo. But what I've done in this copy here is, the one on the left here, is I've removed a couple of interviews. Barbara and Charles are now not in this one. And you'll see down here as well, I've also removed in the uh, this copy on the right, I've removed the entire, uh, sorry, the one on the left, I've removed the entire area and township folders with all of their data. They don't exist in this copy. And down here, I have a folder that doesn't exist on the one on the right. It's query based codes. It's a new folder with some coding in it. It's just the results of a search, but it's just one node. But you can see that doesn't exist here. So changes have been made in both copies. And now we want to bring these together. So I'm going to import into this one because it's easier to see because there's new data going to appear here. So I'm going to just close this other file because I can't import an open file. Um, and I'll now import that into this. So I go to my import tab here. It doesn't matter which one I import into which one in practice because they're going to merge. Um, I'm just doing this so it's visually easier to see the result. So in the import tab here, you can see all the different things you may wish to import. One of them is a project. I'm going to click on project and it's going to ask me to save anything that I haven't saved before it proceeds any further, which I've now done. This is a pretty straightforward process. You can now see uh, I've got this import option here. So I can browse now for my other Envivo file, which in my case is on the desktop and it's called um, a sample project. So I'm now going to bring that into my other project here called import. You can see the name at the top. Now I have a few options here. I can bring in everything, including content or select various items. I don't want to bring in everything, but I can go in and select which nodes or sources I want or every, um, everything excluding content. Um, sorry, selected excluding content. If I just wanted to bring in, say, the coding scheme from a previous project, um, but not the content, or this one, which would, which would give me the option to select certain things. Uh, you can see there, I can select certain items that I want to include or exclude. Um, so you can see I can include cases or nodes or files. I can just pick whichever it is that I want. Um, I'm gonna take all including content and I'm gonna merge them. The same items for duplicate items, I'm going to merge them. So most of the time you don't have to make any changes in this screen at all. So I click my import. And the process begins you'll see it the taskbar being busy down at the bottom here it's merging everything and creating it and it does take a few minutes and when it's completed it looks like there's nothing happening for a minute because it completes the process 
it, the last message you'll see down here is running the report, but you don't see the report for a couple of seconds. So you, you start to click around and you think actually Invivo isn't responding when in fact it is. Here's my report now coming up, but I won't see that report now for a second. And if I click in here, nothing happens. So it does take a minute for that report to come up and now it is. And it's giving me a detailed report here of what's been imported and what hasn't. Most of the time I don't need that, so I can just close that out, but you could explore that if you wanted to. Now you can see that my area and township folders are all back. There's my extra folders. My query based code is in here still. Um, and if I go to my interviews, I now have uh, Barbara and Charles back again with all of their coding. So everything has merged perfectly. Now there are a couple of basic protocols that you need to consider if you're going to work in Teams. One of them is that when you're working in Teams, which are, when you have a remote copy, let's say two coders are working concurrently, don't edit any sources. Try to avoid that completely. Because if I go in and edit Barbara and I make some changes to Barbara, when Envivo goes to merge those files, it will see Barbara as a separate, different file to the one in the other project and duplicate them and the coding. So don't make changes in remote copies. You would merge everything first and make the changes in the master. And also bear in mind that because you're merging, if you make structural changes, in other, words, in other words, I can add nodes all day in either copy, they'll just, they'll just merge in. But let's say I go in here and I delete a node. Well, I'm in a remote copy. That node is not deleted in the other copy. So when we merge, this node that I thought I had deleted will now appear back again. Same if I relocate nodes and change the order of the hierarchy. So you don't do those in the remote copies when you're working remotely. You merge them first and then you make all your changes. There's nothing to stop me adding a memo to this, say delete this node in the master, and that's fine. Um, but I don't delete it here because that simply won't work when I merge the files. So that's it. Um, I put the, the, the note up there for the blog that explains the protocols in a bit more depth. But hopefully that will give you some insights into how to manage collaborative projects where people are working in different countries or across multiple institutions. So we hope that's helpful. Take care. Bye bye.